Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. And today I have Sean's Bar Irish Whiskey. 40% over here by the Celtic Whiskey Shop in Dublin. It's 40 euros. I don't know if it'll ever reach the States or not because this was actually bottled, if you take a look at the bottle very closely, for the oldest bar in Ireland. It's the Athlon Bar, and it says here, um, established since 900 AD. <laughs> Over a thousand years, 1,118 years and counting now, this bar has actually been in existence. That is amazing. Even for German standards, that's very amazing. Now, this is actually called the Luin, L-U-A-I-N, Luin. And it's for the first innkeeper who guided people over this very ancient and treacherous, treacherous um, for, fjord, fjord, as what we say over here, fort. Um, he actually took people on a, on a raft back and forth, and he was an innkeeper, and they dedicated it to him. Now, this is actually just a blend of grain and malted whiskeys from Ireland um, that were primarily, that were actually stored in um, bourbon casks. Now, in one article, I actually did find a reference to uh, the producer of this whiskey, which is probably, um, apparently, West Cork a Distillery. Now, I don't know how um, well-known West Cork is in the States, but over here in Germany, I think we have about 18 different bottlings so far from them, even a 10-year-old bottling. They're one of the most um, innovative Irish whiskey distillers on the island. Very, very interesting. They rechar their own barrels themselves. They have a very complicated, sophisticated, um, unique um, pot still slash column still um, with a lot of pressure going on in there, and they make great whiskeys, actually. If you can ever get your hand on one of them, please do. So that's all I know about this whiskey. So let's try it. First of all, the nose is very pleasant. I would have guessed it's a nice Irish whiskey. It's very light, it's a little bit citrus. And I actually have a little bit here of a... I get like a buttery, creamy moment, even a little bit of a pine cone moment here. I even get a little bit of like a sweet corn, a very, very sweet corn moment. Not the bourbon sweet, but just a sweet corn. Um, I don't know if that's a grain that's coming through or not. And I get a little bit of spearmint. Mm, very, very nice. Um, I would give this nose a B, even a B+. Plus. Let's try it. Mm-hmm. Now this is the interesting part, it's, it's almost continuous. Even towards the end, I really do get this, this pine cone honey. Um, we have clover honey in the States, and over here we actually have black forest honey, which was made by beans that were in the, the pine forest of the black forest. Mmm, very, very nice. And a little bit of that is what I get on my, 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 my mouth here. On my palate, mmm. Very malt, malt forward citrus fruits i even get a little bit of grub like a grapefruit mm, nice wow this is going to be a solid b very very well done now um 40 euros which would be um about 50 dollars for a no name um whiskey from ireland i think is a little steep so i'm going to go for a, a c minus here now the question of the day is um should bars be bottling their own whiskeys. Now, the presidents is in the 18th and I'm well, in the 19th and the early 20th century, it was absolutely normal for a bar to go to a distillery, bring a cask or whatever they had, it was, could be Madeira, it could be a port, it could be a sherry, it could be a bourbon, it could be anything, and they'd bring it to the distillery, fill it up, and then they would actually blend their own whiskeys and serve it to their own customers. So there has a long tradition of um, these bonders actually at the bars doing this. Now, the first example of this actually being done for me is 
um, the Temple Bar. If you've ever been to Dublin, you've seen the Temple Bar. It's also called the Tem Temple Bar District after this bar. And they actually um, distilled, um, it says distilled for Temple Bar. They actually put their cask down in the, in the cellar. And they waited up to 10 years. One, I think, is actually 15 years I have. And this is a, um, a hand fill that you can only get at the distillery. So I love this box. So um, you can put your own label on this. I didn't do that because I'm just using it for bottle shares and so on. And this is basically like a 12-year-old Irish whiskey cast strength. Excellent stuff. Now the question is, should bars be doing this? I mean, they're not producing it themselves. I personally would love for them to do this with transparency. Hello, this is Sean's Bar Irish Whiskey, distilled at, um, at the northernmost distillery in blah, blah, blah county. They don't have to name the distillery, but those of us are in the know, as the uh, cast strength says, um, they can figure out which distilleries are behind this. And um, I know there's agreements. You can't say, hey, I'm bottling myself and therefore don't use our name. But there aren't that many distillers out there in Ireland. Yes, there are 30 new ones being um, built at the moment. I'm going to vi visit about 10 of them myself in the summer of 2018. Going to talk with a lot of master distillers and um, people that are, that are in the know. But yet still, I'm kind of um, a little bit on the fence here about what we should be expecting from these um um, bottlings from bars. Now I think it's kind of cool that Sean does his own bottling, why not? But should more people be doing this? Should more people jump on this bandwagon and we'll have maybe 80 different bottlings out there sometime soon and get even more confusion in the Irish whiskey market? I'm not sure. I would say no. I would say transparency is more important. Tell me where you get your juice from and then I will say no problem. Put your label on it but tell me where it's um, produced and I would be happy. All right, so very, very nice West Coast um, juice. As I said, it's a solid B in the mouth. Um, very, very nice. And it's a C- minus for value for money. Whiskey Jason here. Whiskey from the viewpoint of an American in Germany tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. Please like, please subscribe, please tell others about this interesting guy over here in Germany tasting stuff you will probably never see in the States or in England for that matter or Australia, or probably any place else on this planet unless you have great connections. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.